Hello, everybody. Uh, apparently, we ran out of um, the songs there. And if you could kindly, if, you, if you're in a pair or something, you're willing to give them up. Um, Henry here will collect them because we still have some people coming in here, and it would be nice if they had that. Sorry about that. I had about 95 of them or so. I don't know. I thought I had enough. Thank you. We'll hear in about three minutes. Three minutes and counting. Okay, who now needs a handout? Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand if you need a handout. Nice and high. We got some over here on the side. So Henry, he's holding the basket. He'll come around. While we're waiting here, we have another, like, two minutes. Uh, there was a little handout to everybody. Looks like, hello, looks like this, right? And it, if, if you also were given a pencil. If you could kindly put on your um, name and maybe your email address. Um, of course, this is not required. But if you want to hear any, if you want any um, email notices about our program, and we do more than just the speaker series, this is a great way for us to get in touch with you. And so if you fill it out, um, and that email is not shared with anybody, it goes out as a blind email, so no one will know who you are except me. And um, when you leave, if you could, or if you have it, if you have it finished now, um, Henry will come around and collect it, and he'll put it in the basket. Otherwise, when you leave here today, if you could put that in the basket as well with your pencil, I'd appreciate it. Any questions? Thank you, everybody.
Okay, we're going to get started. I like to start on time. We're going to start with an opening prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, thank you for this day and the opportunity to gather here to learn about the beautiful treasure you gave us, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is not only the mother of the church, but the Queen of Heaven and Our Lady of Refuge. Thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us in this church, our friends and our families. And thank you for our speaker today, Trapper Jack. We ask that you continue to support him in his wonderful ministry that honors your name in the name of Mary. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the start, or the second, the second session of our Finding the Treasure called Mary program. In a nutshell, the program invites you to a deeper relationship with the Blessed Virgin Mary. My name is Linda Lagoonzad, and I am someone like, I'm somewhat like an event planner, um, but I also like to consider myself a Marian planner who champions the Finding the Treasure Called Mary program and helps to coordinate its activities. We are fortunate to have this opportunity to hold this program at St. Columkill. Again, it's in its second season. We would not be here today if it weren't for our parish uh, pastor, Father Anthony Suso, who provides these facilities, and he provides full support of this program. I would also like to thank Deacon Paul Kudalowski, who has always been so encouraging to this program. Uh, before I took on this program, I told him I had serious doubts, because frankly, I thought, who would really want to learn about the Blessed Virgin Mary? And he said to me, Linda, you need to do this program, and you need to be the pencil in Mary's hand. And that was one of the main things that, forced, that brought me forward with this program. I remember I was sitting back there in the church when he spoke to me. I want to thank also Father Robert Ramser because he has graciously agreed to be our official spiritual director this second season and hopefully many seasons to come. And I will tell you, he is a fantastic mentor. He is what this program needs right now to grow. Finally, I want to thank the Mary program members who participate in the program regularly. I want to thank Joanne Fellner with the lovely display of our Blessed Mother here today. And if you are thinking of joining our parish group, I invite you to come along anytime. We are always open to anyone, and we have a fantastic group of caring people. All of our events and activities, like I said, are open, and they are intended as invitations to learn more about Mary. Similar to season one, we begin every speaker series event with a Marian song, and then we pray the Litany of Laredo. So what we're going to do here today, and that you see the handout, there's the Litany of Laredo on the one side, and then on the other side we have the song uh, Immaculate Mary. And what we're going to do is sing the first six verses of this song, and then we're going to segue into, play, into uh, praying the Litany of Laredo, and then we'll return to the uh, last five verses of the song. Okay? Are we all ready to go? All right. And John Thiebaud, uh, our, our director of music ministry here at the parish, has graciously came, uh, is here today to uh, help us with the music. So, all set, John. <laughs>
We will now go to the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary, also called the Litany of Laredo. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. God, the Father of heaven, God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, God, the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother of God, Holy Virgin of Virgins, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Mother of Mercy, Mother of Divine Grace, Mother of Hope, Mother Most Pure, Mother Most Chaste, Mother Inviolate, Mother Undefiled, Mother Most Amiable, Mother Most Admirable, Mother of Good Counsel, Mother of our Creator, Mother of our Savior, Virgin Most Prudent, Virgin Most Venerable, Virgin Most Renowned, Virgin Most Powerful, Virgin Most Merciful, Virgin Most Faithful, Mirror of Justice, Seat of Wisdom, Cause of our Joy, Spiritual Vessel, Vessel of Honor, Singular Vessel of Devotion, Mystical Rose, Tower of David, Tower of Ivory, House of Gold, Ark of the Covenant, Gate of Heaven, Morning Star, Health of the Sick, Refuge of Sinners, Comforter of the Afflicted, Help of Christians, Queen of Angels, Queen of Patriarchs, Queen of Prophets, Queen of Apostles, Queen of Martyrs, Queen of Confessors, Queen of Virgins, Queen of all saints, Queen conceived without original sin, Queen assumed into heaven, Queen of the most holy rosary, Queen of families, Queen of peace, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord God, that we, your servants, may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body, and by the glorious intercession of the blessed Mary, ever virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and obtain eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. crown 
thy sweet mercy with this special grace to behold soon in heaven God's ravishing face. to our main event, Trapper Jack. Our speaker tonight is longtime Cleveland morning radio host, Trapper Jack. Trapper, who is a Hall of Fame broadcaster, was a family-friendly morning radio host for over 30 years. He helped radio listeners in Cleveland, Ohio, wake up with his unique blend of wit, civic pride, and spirituality. Oh, and Trapper's real first name is Philip. As a young man, Trapper left what he felt was a boring and disconnected God. Thirty years later, a series of miraculous encounters ignited his faith, and these powerful events now fuel Trapper's inspirational talks. Since his departure from secular radio ten years ago, Trapper has taken to using his microphone to share his faith through podcasts and uplifting presentations like today. He has produced and hosted the Touched by Heaven and Blind Faith live podcasts, as well as produced the CDs, Did You Hear What God Just Said? and Mary, His Messenger. Trapper's favorite topics include angels, Eucharistic miracles, the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and God's miraculous healings and divine interventions. Trapper loves to focus on the everyday collisions of heaven and earth. Trapper is legally blind from a degenerative retinal disease. He thanks God for the blessing of blindness because it led him back to his Catholic faith. He and his wife Elizabeth have two adult children and are members of the liturgical commission in their parish, St. Bernadette Church in Westlake. Trapper also serves as a lecturer and faith director in the Knights of Columbus. Last year, Trapper presented a new talk for us here at St. Columkill, and it was called Mary at the Foot of the Cross. And he was, he was asked to talk about this, this topic specifically for this particular program. So it was a brand new talk. His talk was so well received that obviously we have brought him back again to St. Columkill for our season two of this program. Now, when Trapper and I discussed the ideal topic for today, this time Trapper insisted he knew the topic we needed to hear today. So with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to present to you my friend, Trapper Jack, who will now present to you his talk entitled, Mary Told Us What Would Happen in Ukraine. Trapper Jack. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> hi, how you doing? Good, 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 good. Say hi to Elizabeth, my wife there. I let her drive tonight, so that's good. <laughs> thank you, Linda. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, and thank you. And, uh, you guys look great, by the way. Again, you guys look just great. Appreciate you coming out uh, with the expensive fuel and everything. You know, you're kind of going, I don't know, is Trapper gas worthy? I don't know. Uh, well, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad I'm here. And I'm glad we're talking about Mary once again. It is one of my favorite uh, topics. She is one of my favorite topics, if not my favorite topic in general. 
Um, last, last month, you know, you had a seminarian standing here. Uh, I'm not one of those. I'm not a, a theologian. I am not uh, a deacon, a priest. What the heck am I? I am, I'm you. I'm really you. I, 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 I love Mary. I've experienced different things. I've read about certain things, and I just love Mary overall. So this is, this is uh, just a home sweet home for me for, to talk about Mary once again. And this topic of Mary told us what would happen in Ukraine. And the reason that I said to Linda, maybe that's the topic, even though that may sound a little dated right now, but it was because of, uh, a couple of months back, I did a YouTube video, and that was the title. 14-minute talk on things Mary has said in Ukraine on a couple of different appearances. And it has over 250,000 views on YouTube. Nothing I've ever done has 250,000 anything. And this thing just took off. And I just thought, Mary's up to something with this. So let's just kind of keep going down this road of Mary and apparitions and things that she said there and elsewhere and maybe tie it back into Fatima, which you heard about last month, and, and see where it goes. But on the way over here today, something occurred to me, and I think you're just the right people to ask this question. And I thought, is it just me? Or do you feel it too? that there's just this huge gap, this huge chasm between those of us who get Mary, truly get Mary, and those who don't, right? Those who are all in on Mary and those who are not. Those who give everything to Mary and those who do not. Those others who say, I, I, not, Mary's a distraction. I got my eyes on Jesus. That's where I'm looking. I'm looking at Jesus. And meanwhile, the rest of us are seeing how Jesus keeps sending mom back to us. She's the one bringing the messages. She's heaven's voice. She's, she's God's spokeswoman, and Jesus keeps sending her back with Our Lady of this and Our Lady of that. And meanwhile, so many of us are going, I just got my eyes on Jesus, and don't confuse me with Mary, right? So here's Mary, and she's, she comes and she talks about rosary and, and brown scapulas and, and secrets and prophecies, and she's always right in her prophecies, and it's dazzling, absolutely dazzling. And why is it Jesus keeps doing it this way? Why? How come it's not uh, our Jesus of Guadalupe? How come it's not our Jesus of Fatima? How come it's not our Jesus of Lourdes? Why does he keep sending Mary back to us to be the messenger? And the answer is, he came to us through Mary, and we are to go back to him through Mary. It's very simple, really. It's so godly. It's so perfect. She is a creature. She's one of us. He's including her. It makes so total sense. But I got my eyes on Jesus. I, I don't have time for these distractions. While Mary, meanwhile, for those of us who are watching, we see how she's putting the puzzle pieces together. Mary's really good at putting the puzzle pieces together for us. Plus, she can get Wordle in three. I'm just saying. Yeah. If you go back 400 years, 400 years, Our Lady of Good Success, 400 years ago, she told us exactly where we were going to be today. The scandals within the church and the priests, how the sacraments were going to be taking a nosedive, less of it, less belief, Right now in the Catholic Church, can you believe this? The source and summit of it all, our Eucharist, Jesus Christ, is not believed by 70% of club members. Do you think the club has a problem? You know? Mary got it right 400 years ago. She said innocence would be taken away from the youth. Modesty would go away. Marriage would be going away. And we see all those things just sliding away. She said that 400 years ago. Mary is his messenger, okay? So we want to take a look a little bit here, yes, at Fatima, yes, at Ukraine, a couple of other things as well, with the, with the idea of what can we learn from Mary? What is Mary talking about? What should we know? And I'm going to tell you a story I'm a little uncomfortable to tell you about because I have not told this story, so I am going to uh, change the names to protect the innocent, okay, including me. <laughs> if I say to you, October 13th, you say what? Yeah, Miracle of the Sun, Fatima, October 13th, 1917. Huge miracle, right? Okay. And if I say to you, October 13th, 2017, 
I remember so well the build-up to that day. I mean, on EWTN, on YouTube videos, there's all of this, this build-up. This is going to be the 100-year anniversary. This is the day that Bishop Fulton Sheen talked about. This, this began the new era for the Catholic Church, this magnificent six-month period of time and this incredible miracle that happened and all of that. This was coming up. So coming up, so on, it was a Friday. Beth and I were going to go to Mass. We're all excited about going to Mass because we know what the homily is going to be about and all that. We were away from our parish, and I don't want to tell you where we were, but we were away from our parish, and we go to Mass, and what's so cool about where we decided to go, and we didn't even think about it at the time, but that they had a grade school. How cool is this? So inside at that Mass, there were going to be kids the same age as Lucia and Jacinta and Francisco, 10, 9, 7 years of age. I mean, this homily is like writing itself. It's so cool what's going on here. And indeed, those three children were shepherds. God loves shepherds. So we're excited about going to Mass. And And when you look back at everything that happened during those six months back in 1917, the prophecies that Mary got, you know, she talked about, yes, you're in World War I or this first World War, but there will be a bigger war unless the world repents. And there was a bigger war. She got it right. She talked about communism, how Russia was going to become godless and spread its errors And indeed it did. That Russia needed to be consecrated to my immaculate heart. And indeed it did and was not for another 50 plus years or about 50 years. And then again earlier this year, what else? I mean, what's interesting is the Vatican ultimately stated that everything that Mary said was so perfect, so perfectly spot on, it was incredibly correct in prophecy. And Pope John Paul II said the messages of Fatima are more important now than they were a hundred years ago, right? So here here we come to that miracle of the sun on October 13th, and my gosh, she nailed it. Mary said there's going to be a huge miracle. The word got out and people came, right? 70,000 plus came. They walked. They came by car. They came by train, by cart, horse, 70,000 descending upon Fatima, and it was the worst day It was raining, and it had been raining for more than a day. There's mud everywhere. It's not a pretty day in here. 70,000 people have gathered for this miracle of the sun. Absolutely incredible what happened, everything that happened that day. And and so it's it's about noontime, and the clouds part finally, and the the sun comes out. The rain finally stops. Mary appears to the children, and what does she say? She says, God is so offended. People have to stop offending God. Pray your rosary every day. It can stop wars. There she is again. She's saying it all. But then, from her her hand, light poured out of her hand and shot up to the sun, and the sun began to spin, to spin and turn and change colors. And, oh, my gosh, then it starts dancing all over the place. Men were getting down on their knees, women down on their knees, praying the Apostles' Creed. This This is in the news reports. How men would shout at other men, take off your hats, God is present. People on their knees praying. It was incredible what was going on. Healings were going on. The sun starts zipping all over the place and then it scares the heck out of everybody, dive bombs everybody twice and everybody thinks the world is coming to an end, this is it. Everyone is screaming and yelling, this is over and then the sun goes back up and plops itself into place and it's over. People 20, 30 miles away saw the same thing. This was, this was not mass hallucination. Everybody saw this that was in that region. Incredible. And then they looked around, and what was, what was, what was left? The ground was dry. Their clothes were clean and dry. Miracles had happened. People had regained sight. Cripples were now walking. It was incredible what was going on. Incredible. Bishop... Uh, uh, it's Bishop, uh, I'm forgetting his name. Who's our current, uh, the bishop that's going to Minnesota? Barron, thank you. Blinked on him. Bishop Robert Barron talks about how first comes encounter, then comes repentance, then comes mission. And that was so true. The encounter, what, what those people experienced. Like I say, the media was there. Media, was, including atheist newspapers who, who came just to slam it and have fun with it, had to write the truth. They did. They wrote the truth of everything that happened. They just said God had nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know? Encounter, repentance, people down on their knees. 
and then mission, going out and telling other people what they had seen. So here we are at Mass, and like I say, we're just excited about the whole thing, just about being there, and the kids are there and everything, and the gospel ends, and then, and then the priest began his homily, which included not one word about Fatima. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going, what? Yeah. And my wife goes, what's that coming off your head? And I said, smoke. <laughs> Is this show? And I'm, I, I really was, I was upset. You know, it's one of those, it's one of those uh, masses sometimes you leave, you go out to the car, and then you sit in the car and you look at each other and go, what the heck was that? What was he talking about today? It was, although that's never happened to St. Column Kill, by the way. <laughs> it's the, never here, never. But on that particular day, and she says, well, settle down. I said, I know, I know, but I just, you know, I said, this, this is what I live for. It really is. My hot button is that everything we read about in the Bible is still happening today. I don't even know where to put that in the Bible. Is that loaves and fishes to 5,000? Is that the parting of the Red Sea? It's so massive that if it was in the Bible, we wouldn't miss it. We'd be talking about it all the time. Not a word. Not a word. But it's like, okay, shake it off. It's, it's got to be me. Okay, it's me. I'm putting it on me. It's, it's me. I, I'm, 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 I put too much importance on that kind of stuff. It's just, that's just kind of my hot button. Okay. Years pass, four years pass, so now it's last year, and it's on a Friday, and it is the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus, which is tomorrow, by the way. So it's almost exactly a year ago, on Friday, the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. When Beth and I are at a church thing, there's a, a number of priests there, the people there, there's food there, this thing's going on, right? And I see that priest. I see that priest, and we kind of amble over to see what's going on with his group. <laughs> and, and they're talking about Divine Mercy Sunday. And, the, and, you know, Jesus appearing to St. Faustina Kowalska, and I hear him say, ah, private revelation. Private revelation. And he's kinda, he just kind of blows it off. Private, like, it's not, it's not a big, you know, like, and he says, like Fatima. And it, I get that smoke problem again. <laughs> and I'm indoors, so I could be fined, you know, so. And I'm just kind of going, and I, I had to walk away. It's like, you know, okay. And he's, by the way, he's a very good priest. By all accounts, he's a wonderful, wonderful priest. He and I might differ about this kind of thing, but he's a great, great reputation, wonderful priest. So I'm not, I, I say nothing bad about him at all. Nothing bad at all. But at the same time, it's like, man, I just... So on Sunday morning, I'm at Mass. Beth and I are at Mass. And before the Mass starts, I get down on my knees and I say to God, I say to Jesus... Tell me where I have this wrong. Tell me where I have it wrong. Tell me, tell me I'm overreacting. Tell me Fatima's not a big deal and St. Faustina and Divine Mercy Sunday. Just Our Lady of Guadalupe, just tell me. Just humble me. Tell me I've got it wrong because obviously I do. I'm making too big a deal of this stuff. And he answered immediately. I went home that day and I went to the bedroom and I sat in the chair and I can't explain why I did what I did other than for some reason I pulled out my phone and I opened up my Kindle app which has dozens and dozens of books on Kindle and Surrey can read those books to the blind guy and, for, and I know I'm supposed to open up my book so I open up Kindle and I don't know what book he wants me to go to I just start scrolling I don't know what I'm I, I got books I don't know I don't know what order they're in. I'm just scrolling through books. Scrolling, scrolling. I'm scrolling. What are you doing? Scrolling. Stop. And I put my finger down on the screen, and it read to me the book that was under my finger. The book is called Our Lady of Kibaho. Kibaho, Rwanda. Back in the 80s, Mary appeared to three teenage girls and showed them what was going to happen in 10 years, a mass genocide in Rwanda. She showed them, they saw the river of blood, the chopped up bodies, the, it was horrible. It was the Hutus against the Tutsis, and it was just mass slayings, genocide, horrible. And these girls were shown what was going to happen in 10 years unless that country changed. It all came true. And that's why that's an approved Catholic apparition, because all of it came true. And, I, and I'm on it, and I'm going, why? What am I, what? I remember reading the book. I remember enjoying the book. I know it's a good book. And I opened that book, and it's on page 9. The author of the book's name is Immaculate. And Immaculate is telling the story, and I'm just letting Surrey read me the story, and Immaculate is telling me the story 
of how when she was 11 years old in basically the sixth grade, they're in class and the teacher is talking about what? Fatima. And the teacher is telling the kids all about Fatima and, these, and that how Mary came from heaven and appeared to these three kids and, and how they were shepherds and the miracle of the sun and da-da-da-da-da. And the teacher is telling them that the two, the two youngest, actually died within a couple of years of all of this, but that the older one, Lucia, is still alive today when the book was written, still alive today, and she became a nun, and Immaculate goes, what? What, what is it? What, what, what Immaculate? What is it? And Immaculate says... Fatima, that story you were telling us, yeah. That's a real story? I thought you were making it up. I thought this was a pretend story. That's a real story? Mary really came from heaven and came, to, and came down and appeared to those children? And, she, and, she's, and the teacher's laughing. Yes, Immaculate, of course, it's a real story. It's Our Lady of Fatima. It's a real story. And Immaculate says, does the church know? And she laughs and goes, yes, Immaculate, the church knows. And then Immaculate says, then why don't they talk about it at Mass? And I put my phone away. You know, when I, when I talk to God, it's like that scene from Top Gun. Talk to me, goose. Talk to me. <laughs> you know, talk to me, goose. That's the way I talk to God. Talk to me, God. Talk to me, Mary. Talk to me, Jesus. And he's talking. He's telling me that this 11-year-old Immaculate is a prophet. That's what a prophet does. A prophet holds up the mirror to the church and says, here it is, this is, the, this is the truth. Here's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And here it is, why aren't you talking about this at Mass? And what God is showing me is that's his opinion too. He's, and he's not criticizing the priest, again, he's not. He's making commentary back to me. And, he, and, he, and he's saying, yeah, why aren't they talking about what I am doing now? Not just 2,000 years ago. As the guy that was on the radio forever, I talked to a lot of musicians, a lot of band members. You know what their biggest lament is? It's great. Everybody loves our oldies. I just wish they liked our new music too. <laughs> and here's God going, don't you guys like my new music? Don't you like Our Lady of Guadalupe and Fatima and Lourdes? Don't you like that? Don't you like that guy I healed of cancer when everybody prayed? How come you're not talking about that stuff? You know? That was his message back to me. Fatima, yeah, yeah, you talk about it. Of course you talk about it. Stand here and talk about it. Absolutely. Mary has played such an integral part in my life. She's just turned me around. She went and found me. She brought me back into the church. She did something four years ago that was really interesting. It has to do with my podcast, the podcast that Linda mentioned, Touched by Heaven. It's about encounter with angels and divine intervention, near-death experiences, all kinds of cool stuff. Four years ago, before I started it, I wasn't sure there would be enough people with encounter stories to do a weekly episode. Well, as it turns out, we're at 214, and week after week after week, there's just people all over the world who have encounter stories with angels, with Mary, with Jesus, all these things, right? But I wasn't too sure. And my wife Elizabeth says, I think it's a great idea. Pray about it. I said, you know, i got to do something more powerful than prayer. So I said, Alexa, What's today's Bible verse? I didn't even know Alexa did this. She does. What's today's Bible verse? And Alexa says, Proverbs, commit to the Lord in whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Say, what? Just commit to the Lord in whatever you do. If you're going to do this, do it. Commit to the Lord in whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. He will make it happen. And for the last four plus years, he keeps sending me people with incredible stories. Thanks be to God. So we did a couple of episodes, and I wasn't sure about the balance. I like including humor. Was there too much humor? Not enough serious? I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. So I'm praying, and I wasn't consecrated to Mary just yet. That was still in my future. I didn't quite fully get the Mary thing yet. So I'm praying that God, come on, God, I need to know the balance. Just let me know the balance. So one day, Beth and I were at daily mass, and we're kind of scattered about, right, like daily mass is, and not a ton of people, just scattered about. <laughs> and... During the Mass, while we were standing, and I don't remember what part of the Mass, I just remember standing, I hear a voice coming from my right front pocket. My phone. It's a guy's voice, and he says, We are attempting to find somebody who can help you. Please stand by. 
And you do what you do when your phone is on in the church, you know, you go and you fumble for all the little, you know, buttons and everything, trying to, you know, Beth's right here, and she's kind of looking at me like, what is that? I said, okay, again, male voice, we're attempting to find somebody who can help you, please stand by. And then a woman's voice, hello, may I help you? <laughs> hello, may I help you? And I'm going, I don't know. Okay, mass ends, and I put, and Beth's going, what is that? I said, I don't know, I don't know. And I pull out my phone, and I go, oh my gosh. I said, an app opened up all by itself. The app is called Be My Eyes. It's for blind people. What it is, is, and I'll tell you, the last time I used it, uh, it was because Beth was out of the house and I needed, she called me and said, could you get the frozen stuffed peppers out of the freezer? Well, unfortunately, the frozen stuffed peppers come in about the same container as the frozen, what was it? Can cannellonis, cannellini, whatever that was, I don't know. And I'm going, I don't know which one's which. So I, I, used the, uh, I, used, <laughs> I used this app, you hit it, you hit a call, and it activates the phone and the camera and some guy in Texas answered. Jim was on the other line. Hey, Jim, how's it going? And I, you know, it's like, do you do this very often? He says, yeah. And I also speak Farsi, so I'm getting Middle Eastern calls. And that's cool. And well, anyway, what is this? And he says, you got the stuffed peppers. I said, thanks, Jim, appreciate it. And that's what Be My Eyes is all about. And it had opened up, and a male voice had said, we're attempting to find someone who can help you. And remember, it was a female voice, gender-specific, saying, may I help you? And I'm looking at Beth, and I could see better then, because over there is a statue of Mary. And I'm looking at her. You want to be my eyes, Mary? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Because I'm praying for something, someone to help guide me in how I balance this, this podcast. I'm going, gender specific, be my eyes, you want to be my eyes? And ever since then, I've just always gone to Mary. This is pre-consecration. I started the process a little early and I've never had a problem since. I just keep going to Mary, and she keeps telling me. As a matter of fact, going to Mary today, now Linda thinks this day just kind of fell out of the sky. We were talking about maybe doing it last Thursday, and she thought, no, I need, I need an extra week to promote it. Let's do it today, as if God doesn't know what's going to happen here. Every day this week has Mary in it. It really, it really does, every day. Today is the feast day of whom? John the Baptist. Huh, what do you know about that? Now, keep in mind, John the Baptist Day was supposed to be tomorrow, the 24th, but tomorrow's the Sacred Heart of Jesus, so they move it to today, and at six months in the womb, it's John the Baptist filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's Mary's voice. Here's Mary's voice coming into Elizabeth's house. Hey, Elizabeth, it's your cousin Mary. Hi, and, G and here's, here's John the Baptist. What's Luke say? Leaping for joy, connecting, filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's Mary's voice. And on that spiritual level knows Mary means Jesus. Mary means Jesus. Mary leads us to Jesus. He's getting all of that at six months in the womb. I don't have time for Mary and all that stuff. I got my eyes on Jesus. Then you're missing the voice. You're getting Mary and Jesus together. Every time you get Mary, you get Jesus. And John the Baptist kicks it off six months in the womb. He's getting it, you know? If I look at tomorrow, Sacred Heart of Jesus, that makes Saturday, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, side by side, just like it is on the back of the miraculous medal you have on you right now. Or maybe that miraculous medal is on your rosary, right in the back, teeny tiny. There's the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, just like Mary had St. Catherine put on that medal back in 1830, side by side, just the way they are now. Just like Mary said at Fatima, God wants there to be devotion to my immaculate heart. There it is again. Not me wants it, God wants it. God wants devotion to my immaculate heart. Where else can we go this week? Mary's all over the place. Look at yesterday's gospel. Jesus talking about fruit. You can't get good fruit from a rotten tree can't get rotten fruit from a good tree so look at tomorrow besides being the sacred heart of jesus it just happens to be the 41st anniversary of the first apparition of mary to the visionaries in magigoria 41 years ago tomorrow and maybe you say that's not approved by the catholic church 
not disapproved either. As a matter of fact, Pope Benedict, for four years between 2010 and 2014, had a commission looking at those initial apparitions of Mary to those six visionary kids in Magigoria, and they voted overwhelmingly they believed and that the Pope should make it an actual Catholic-approved vision and apparition. Pope has not done that, but the commission said they were in by an overwhelming vote. Fruit? You want to talk about fruit in Magigoria? You want to talk about the thousands of men who say they are now priests because they went there? Thousands. You want to talk about the 50 million people who went there to get closer to Jesus through Mary? You want to talk about all the healings? I've had a ton of people talk to me about the healings they received from inoperable brain tumors that went away over there to migraines to great conversion stories that happened there. What is the one word you can boil Magigoria down to? Conversion. Mary says it. Conversion. Mary's the one in Magigoria who said, the, forget the visionaries, it's five stones. What does Mary say to do with those five stones? Pray your rosary every day. Go to confession at least once a month. Read the Bible every day, go to Mass, receive the Eucharist, and fast now and then. That sounds pretty diabolical, doesn't it? What else happened? Where else, where else is there fruit in Magigoria? What about Pope Pius XI? Back in the early 1930s, he gets a dream. And this dream says there's this mountain you need to put a cross on to commemorate the 1900th year of, of since the crucifixion of Christ. So in 1933, there is now a 16-ton concrete cross in what was just the middle of nowhere, which we now know to be part of the Magigoria landscape. It's Cross Mountain. What about St. James Church? More fruit. St. James, by the way, the patron saint of pilgrims. 50 million. St. James Church in 1969 got a big overhaul. It was made much bigger than it was. Like, why is it so big? Why are you guys making it so big? Well, in a dozen years, they found out when people started coming after these visions started happening. And why is it that St. James Church is called the confessional of the world? How many confessionals are in this church? Try 50. 50, 25 down both sides of St. James, and they are busy morning, noon, and night. And when they fill up, they do more confessionals outside because priests are there from all over the world listening to confessions. 50 confessionals and more if necessary. Fruit? You think that's a rotten tree? How are you getting such good fruit from that rotten tree? There's a lot more happening in Magigori. In fact, my wife and I are headed there in October. We, we got a calling in. And we're going. Let's talk about Ukraine. Let's talk about Ukraine. That's the title of this thing. We should find out a little bit about Ukraine. What's that all about? Some of you know this. In fact, the question will, will give you the answer. What country in the world was the first to consecrate itself to the Blessed Mother Mary? Ukraine. Where can you find soldiers right now with an army patch right there and in the middle is an image of Mary? Ukraine. So in 1914, this is three years before Fatima, three years before she's telling those kids about Russia's about to go godless, three years before that, she appears in this area called Harushiv. And she, this is two weeks before World War I starts. She appears holding the infant child Jesus. She appears to 22 workers out in the field that were mowing the fields. And she tells them it's about to get ugly. For the next 80 years, for you guys, it's going to be ugly. You're going to lose your independence. Russia's going to become godless. You're going to be persecuted. They were. Seven to ten million were either starved to death by Stalin or shot to death. You will suffer through world wars, plural. All this in 1914. Spot on, dead on, prophetic. Everything she said was right. To the point where if you know Father Mark Goring or Father Chris Alar, two huge you know, priests in, in social media, they are so excited about what she said and how accurate was she was at 1914 because the 1987 appearances by Mary, it's more the same. So it's like pay attention to this stuff. She's getting this stuff right. So when she appeared in 1987, she appeared to the minute 
to the one year anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster with the nuclear power plant to the minute she appeared one year before Chernobyl happened she appeared at that moment as a sign she said that this is a sign this is a nuclear warning to us all she appeared atop a church an abandoned church called Holy Trinity Church there was this light this light that just shone up 200 yards and Mary was there and people started coming she first appeared to this 12 year old girl named Marina then all these other people come so pretty soon after a while you're getting 40,000 70,000 people a day she appeared between April 26th and August 15th the Feast of the Assumption total crowd different people and all that probably over a half a million people saw Mary in that light carrying the infant child getting the messages that she delivered the Russians weren't too thrilled about all this they want to quell all this they first throw a tarp over the church that doesn't work then they start throwing light above the church so that that light will maybe mute the light that's above the church you can't outshine heaven that didn't work then they bring in a documentary team they bring in this documentary team to basically put together a documentary that says go back to your homes there's nothing going on here right so they record the documentary nothing going on they get it they edit the whole thing together they throw it on television and guess what you can see Mary and you can see Jesus on top of the church there were no reruns for that documentary by the way what did Mary say when she was walking up there what did she say she said your suffering is almost over you're going to have your independence they had it in four years in 1991 them and a, and a number of other countries what else you need to forgive you need to forgive Russia and everybody else you need to forgive she said Russia would be converted because of the suffering of Ukraine and of the martyrs they would convert she said but right now they're in darkness and right now there is still a denial of my son and they have to convert and if they don't convert there will be World War III that's that nuclear option again back to that power plant situation that's why she appeared on that day there is a nuclear warning in all of this that's where we are right now guys what's going to come with all this going on right now is Russia going to convert how how are they going to convert what's going to happen what's going to make them convert or is there going to be World War III what's going to happen Mary said, pray your rosary. Satan hates it. She called Ukraine my daughter. She said, you've been so faithful. You are the first country to entrust yourself to me. You have never lost faith, hope, or love in my son. And we are now appearing close to those times that are called the end times. She actually said it in 1987. We're just about there, what is called the end times. As a matter of fact, one of the messages of Magigoria is Mary saying, I'm not coming back after this. There will be no need to. We are just about at the end of the era, guys. And it doesn't take Magigoria and other places to say that. There are seers and visionaries that have been saying that. We are in the generation. We are in the generation. Believe that or not. That's what Mary is saying. That's what visionaries are saying. Like never, these aren't crazy. These aren't the crazy people who say Jesus is coming to get us. So let's go meet up on the mountain on Thursday because he's coming to get us. These aren't those people. These are people actually carrying the wounds of Christ on their body that are saying these kinds of things. So I put together that little 14-minute video I talked about about Ukraine. I stick it on YouTube. Two hundred fifty thousand plus views are out there right now. Why? What are you doing, Mary? Why that video? I've done other stuff about Mary. Why that video? Why do you want that one seen? Before I recorded it, that morning, I got two songs. This is the way the Holy Spirit's been talking to me for the last decade, since leaving radio. He gives me music. Suddenly a song will start playing in my head, and I can't get it out of my head, you know those earworms? Only if it stays with me, I will, I will finally go look. I don't know lyrics. And I'll go look up the lyrics. And I'll spiritualize the lyrics, see what it's about. Well, I got two songs that morning. One of them from the monkeys, called I'm a Believer. Then I saw her face, now I'm a believer. I couldn't leave her if I tried. Whose face? Her face. Mary's face? Is this in the past? Is this in the future? I'm thinking future. I'm a believer. Then I saw her face, 
Now, I'm a believer. I couldn't leave her if I tried. Did anybody happen to see the video that got posted yesterday on Spanish television of Mary's face appearing above the Russian skies? There was like this red, white, and blue blast, then Ma and then Mary in, in, in blue, and you could see her face. I, I wish I could understand the commentary. It was in Spanish, so I don't know, other than people were... And I, I don't know, is that, is that a, a small piece to something else? I have no idea. Is Mary up to something in Russia? I have no idea, but I'm prayerful, because the other song I got was such a silly song. I get, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. What is that? So, in the moment, I say to Suri, what's the definition of kumbaya? And Suri says, it's not really a word, but cynics connect it. Cynics connect it to being naive, unrealistic, and optimistic. Cynics connect the word to being naive, unrealistic, and optimistic. You know, like being a Christian. <laughs> We're so naive. We actually believe that when you pray on beads, things happen. We actually believe Mary when she says, this is your greatest spiritual weapon. We actually believe when we eat this bread in this church that it's, Je that it's God. We are so naive, unrealistic. Oh, unbelievable. We actually believe when we consecrate, our, uh, consecrate ourselves to Mary, something happens, we get extra graces. What fools we are. That when we sit in front of the tabernacle, we get extra We are so naive, unrealistic, but optimistic, Pollyanna. In a good way. What is Mary up to? And I'll tell you what comes to me. This is just me. I don't know if this is inspiration, if this is just me. I can't tell the difference. I will tell you, I cannot tell the difference. All I know is when I look at, then I saw her face, and now I'm a believer, and there's, then they may be seeing her face. I couldn't leave her if I tried. I know I can't. I know that feeling. You know what I went to? I went to something God did 500 years ago. We all know there's a great chastisement coming. We've all heard that. All the visionaries say the same thing. At some point, God is going to cream us. It's all over the Old Testament, World War I, World War II. He creams us. He's going to do it. There will be a great chastisement. However, Mary doesn't do that, does she? Mary comes and loves you. That's her job. That's how she came and got me. Look what she did 500 years ago near Mexico City. You have Aztec pagans killing their babies and giving them to the gods. You know, it's a sacrifice to make you happy. We're trying to make the sun god happy because in December he seems to be going away, you know. Let's go kill some more people. Let's go kill some more babies. Sacrifice them to the gods. Oh, look, the sun's coming back. It worked. Horrible. Horrible. You got, you got a small group of Spaniards there trying to convert, and they're getting nowhere with these people. And suddenly, out of nowhere, here comes Mary as Our Lady of Guadalupe. And like that, they switch. Handful of years. Handful of years. The symbolism in that cloak on Juan Diego, the symbolism told them everything they needed to know. There she is. She's standing in front of their sun god. She's more powerful. She's eclipsing their God. She's standing on their moon God. She's more powerful than the moon. Who is this woman? And the symbolism said who she was. She's from heaven, and she's the queen of heaven, and she's a virgin but pregnant with God. The story of Christianity is all there. They bought it. They believed. They cried out to be baptized. Nine million Aztec pagans became Christians, Catholics, coming to Mass and receiving the Eucharist. Because Mary showed up and she said to Juan Diego, I am so honored to be your mother. Your mother. I am so honored to be the mother of everybody who lives in this region. Honored. Their mother. Do you know there's a fifth dogma that hasn't happened yet? For the last 100 years, there have been millions of people trying to get the Vatican, trying to get the Pope to sign off on this. The fifth dogma that she is the mother of us all. How many here already know that? <laughs> How many already know that she is our spiritual mom in heaven? Of course we already know that, but it's not official yet. We know as dogma, we know about the perpetual virginity, we know about her immaculate conception, we know that she's the mother of God, and we know that she was assumed into heaven 
body and soul. Those are the four that accepted. If you're in communion with the Catholic Church, you have to believe those four. The fifth is that she is the mom of us all. And it began when it was from the cross, behold your mother. And the same is true for us. Millions of letters have been written. 800 bishops, priests, cardinals have written their letters trying to make it official. Pray for that. Because in, in certain private appearances, private revelations, a lot of seers are saying world peace doesn't come until everyone acknowledges, until the church acknowledges that she is the mother of all. Mary hugging everybody down there. No chastisement. There were no swords drawn. It was just a giant hug from Mary, and there was this massive conversion. Will she do that again in Russia? It looks like that's what it's going to take. I'm naive, optimistic, and uh, unrealistic enough to believe she just might. She comes at you with such love. She came after me with such love. There, I, I've broken every commandment in the world. And in 1999, I'm, you know, I'm going to church sometimes, and I, I'm not there. I'm not there. And here comes Mary in August of 1999. I'm saying a prayer this Sunday afternoon. I said, I, I don't know what I'm missing. You do, and I just throw the prayer up. And within a few months, it was answered, and I was being directed to the right people. And when I looked back on when I said that prayer, it was August 15th, Feast of the Assumption, Mary's fingerprints. In 2003, in the middle of the night, I woke up, and the, and the room was illuminated, and none of my lights were on. The room was just illuminated, and all my vision issues were gone, and I'm looking around, and I'm awake, and I'm going, what is this? Well, it was the light of the world saying, hi, <laughs> you know? I had my vision back for one minute. The room was illuminated. It was, it, it was incredible. It happened on December 8th of 2003, Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Mary's fingerprints again. Mary's fingerprints are all over my conversion story. Be my eyes on my conversion story. This is how Mary operates, right? What else is Mary? Mary is the Ark of the Covenant, isn't she? That's what we call her, the Ark of the New Covenant. Powerful. And we equate it to the original Ark of the Covenant, don't we? What was in there? Word of God, tablets, manna from heaven, you have that heavenly bread, you had the rod of Aaron, he was the high priest. And what do you have in Mary, in the womb? Word of God, alive. You had that heavenly bread, living bread. You have him as the high priest, she's the ark of the new covenant. So she showed me something about this ark of the new covenant. She showed me something in World War II as this powerful being that Mary is. She showed me how on December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy, right? Pearl Harbor and all that kind of good stuff. We declared war on December 8th. Huh, there it is again. Feast of the Immaculate Conception. War ends 1945. Emperor Hirohito on the radio announcing Japan has surrendered. He did it on the radio August 15th of 1945. Isn't that a coincidence? Let's see, what else? Code name for the atomic bomb tested in New Mexico. Try Trinity. Craig Turner, he's a, he's a Catholic author, and he wrote, a, he wrote an article about that first atomic bomb in Hiroshima. First atomic bomb, it killed 80,000 like that, killed 140,000 over a period of weeks and months. And, but he wrote about, in particular, that first square mile. You know, when that atomic bomb blows, it's thousands of degrees, it's hundreds of miles an hour of wind that's being created. It's just decimating everything. And he talks about in that first square mile of Hiroshima, she said, he said, everything, everything is crumbled, everything is on fire, Everything and every living thing is dead. Every man, woman, child, animal, every, everything is dead, crumbled on fire. You know? Oh, except for one. Except for one household. One household. Eight blocks away from the epicenter. Eight blocks away. At Our Lady of Assumption Catholic Church, church is decimated, but right next door at the parish house, every priest was alive and well and untouched. Some articles say it was four priests. Some say it was eight priests. No harm, no contamination, no hearing loss, no nothing. Doctors told him, you're going to be dead in 24 hours. No, they weren't. Scientists looked at him, and, and doctors followed him for the rest of their lives. What's with you guys? They told him, they said, your skull should have collapsed, your limbs should have been blown off, your clothes should be on fire, take a breath, you should be dead, and here you are, you guys are perfect. What did you do? And they held up this. 
And they said, we prayed the rosary. Mary told us to at Fatima. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. This, yeah, literally for them. Literally. The Ark of the Covenant, August 15th, December 8th, Trinity. What the heck? Well, you know how I uh, mentioned my hot button is everything written in the Bible is still happening today? That story is in the Bible. That Ark of the Covenant story is in the Bible. You take your rosary, your Ark of the Covenant, and you just stretch it back into the Old Testament. Moses has just died. Joshua has taken over, and he's taking the people into the Promised Land. Now, there's a whole lot of enemy in the Promised Land, isn't there? He's crossed the Jordan, he's in the Promised Land. Enemy everywhere. Canaanites are over there, the Sittites are over there, the Stalactites are, well, you know. And God says, no worries, guys, Jericho first. The walls of Jericho are going to come crumbling down. And they go over to Jericho, and they have the Ark of the Covenant. they got the box with all the godly stuff in it, right? And for six days, they go around once. And on the seventh day, they go around seven times, and they blow their horns, and they shout praises to God, and the walls of Jericho come crumbling down, don't they? And then God says, set fire to it all. And kill every man, woman, child, animal. Look it up. Kill every man, woman, child, animal. Touch nothing. Leave it just as it is, crumbled and on fire. Oh, except for one family. There's that one woman who helped us. That one woman who helped us. Uh, she has got a couple of our Israelite people. Yeah, pull them out, those, make those messengers safe. Now, you tell me the difference between those two stories. Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the New Covenant, that's Mary. What if, Mary can do anything. Mary can do anything. Understand that in that Israelite time, those people were set aside. They were consecrated to God. Set aside. Made holy. Set aside. I am your God. You are my people. And look what Mary told the United States of America. A Christian nation had been bombed. You were trying to stay out of the war. Now you can't. A Christian nation was bombed, and here comes the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, we got some chastisement. We lost a lot of people. But you know what? Had we had to go into Japan conventionally, I've seen articles that say a million people could have died. I might not be here because my dad was of the age. You might not be here because of what? A father? A grandfather? Who knows? Who knows? The Ark of the Covenant protected this country. This country was consecrated to the Immaculate Conception of Mary from the get-go by Bishop John Carroll. Early on in this country's history, and since then we've been consecrated to Mary, Immaculate Conception, a number of times. Plus, the Americas, our, our patroness, is Our Lady of Guadalupe. This has power. And I say that because, what did we just do last March 25th? Finally, we said the word Russia, right? right? Consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Although Lucia, the, the Fatima child, will tell you that that time in 1984 when Pope John Paul II said the world, which included Russia, she did say that took. But we're 50 years after we were supposed to do it. Russia had already spread its errors. But that consecration did take in 1984 as well. Plus, now we have this one giving it more backbone. But, in, but look what happened. Right after that, within a short period of time, the Berlin Wall, like Jericho, came crumbling down with that consecration. Ukraine became free, so did some other, many other countries. And on Christmas Day, 1991, the Soviet flag came down for the last time. Is that not God speak? <laughs> that is pure God speak. Well, Russia has now been consecrated. And if we do what Mary says, we pray our rosaries, and we do First Saturday devo devotion, and really take that seriously, what comes with that, what can happen? And if, we, if you are not consecrated to Mary yet, now you will. It has so much power. It, it, yes, you can go to Jesus directly. There's nothing wrong with it. People have been doing it for 2,000 years. But there is something extra graces when you just give everything to Mary. I can go to Jesus directly, but here's the deal, and I said this last time I was here, I'm defective. <laughs> I look like a saint. I know. I'm still posing for my saint picture. 
kind of wispy, kind of ethereal. Or I can go through Mary because everything from Mary, when I, when I throw my prayers at Mary, she takes them to her son and she takes my ego out of it. She wraps my intentions with your intentions and her intentions. By the time it gets to Jesus, it's a perfect prayer. You just dump it all on Mary and let her, and let her take it to her son. It is so powerful. So where are we right now? If we pray our rosaries every day because it has power, because as she said in the beginning... Back in the 1200s when she gave this to St. Dominic, she said, preach this, pray this. It's your most powerful spiritual weapon. Satan hates it. Why wouldn't you? You know, why wouldn't you? First Saturday devotion, what does that mean? It means on the first Saturday of every month, and actually they give you a week on either side as far as the confession goes. You go to confession, and on that first Saturday, yes, you go to our Sunday that weekend, you go to Mass, you receive the Eucharist, you pray a rosary, and you contemplate for 15 extra minutes the mysteries on the rosary. That's it. First Saturday devotion for five Saturdays in a row, for first, five first Saturdays in a row, and, and you've done it. And it has so many graces that will come to you and the world. So what do I think is going to happen? I'll just give you a thought. I don't know. I'm no prophet here, guys. I'm no prophet. I'm just holding up a mirror saying, hmm, I'm just looking at stuff. I'm just looking at stuff. I look at the messages of Magigoria. I look at the messages of Garabandal. If you haven't read about Garabandal, Spain, read it. Anybody familiar? Phenomenal what happened there in the early 60s for four years. Literally thousands of apparitions to four visionaries, four young girls at the time. They're still alive. Incredible experiences where when Mary was there, they would go into this rapture, this ecstasy, where they, they would just kneel there and they would poke them with pins and they didn't feel it and they'd shine light in their eyes and they, and they wouldn't blink. I mean, they were just totally someplace else with Mary. Early on in it, because, you know, not an approved Catholic you know, thing and all that, yet it's not, you know, they don't say it's not, they don't say it is, it's just sitting there. But what's interesting is that early on, the four girls got a letter, unsigned. And the unsigned letter at Garbandal said, the world doesn't believe you, but I do. Mary, Mary visited me this morning at 9 a.m., told me everything you are saying is true about what is to come and the prophecies and the secrets that have been given and the miracle that's coming in the world. She's told me all of it is true. I believe you, but the world does not. And, she, and he went and go on to, with something Mary had said too, which is by the time the world does believe, and it will believe, it's going to be too late. And Conchita, one of the girls, showed it to Mary and said, somebody wrote this, it's not signed. And Mary said, oh, that was written by Padre Pio. Now Saint Padre Pio, who got a chance to see the miracle before it's even happened, because there is a miracle coming, designed to convert the atheists. It's going to happen at Garbandal in Magigoria. It's going to happen both places. Saint Padre Pio was so believing of what happened at Garbandal and all the secrets and the messages that are all coming that he did something. When he died, there was a burial veil over his face, and he made sure that Conchita got it. That's how all in he is in with Garbandal. What about Magigoria? What about Garbandal? Well, when you combine these two things, you end up with these visionaries all saying the same things about ten secrets and what's going to happen first and this miracle that's going to happen at, on the grounds of both places. What seems to be the case with both is in in the near future, because these, these girls are all still alive and a couple of guys in this thing too. What seems to be that's going to happen is that somewhere along the, Mar on the way, Mary's going to say, okay, read the first secret. And she's going to tell the priest, the priest is going to tell the world. It's going to be something like, I'll just say, uh, Cleveland, Ohio is going to get an earthquake of 8.2, Richter scale, 4,200 people are going to die, and it's going to happen at 3.30 in the afternoon. Mary is going to say something like that to be announced, and it's going to happen. And, and some people might go, huh, Wonder how that happened, getting people's attention. It might be a little more supernatural than that. Also, in both places, there's a lot of talk about a warning, an illumination of conscience, a purification, because here's something else coming up based on what visionaries have been saying for quite a while now. We're all going to experience it. I've talked to some people who already have this moment of illumination of conscience where every sin you've ever committed is going to be thrown before you 
like this. In a matter of a few minutes, everything you've ever done wrong, the ripple effect it had on others, and you are going to be devastated by it, as I will be. It will be like the most painful moment of your life when you see how devastating parts of your life have been. And it's coming, and we all have to see it. We all have to be brought, dropped to our knees, and we are going to see in that moment where we would have gone had we died in that moment. And some will die in that moment. It will be so shocking. That's what we know from both Garbandal and Magigoria. And the third thing we know is in both places there's going to be something miraculous. Some miracle, something that will stay. Uh, something you could take a picture of but can't touch. Think, they say, I think rainbow, permanent rainbow, but it's going to be greater than that. Greater than that. Something you can take a picture of, something that is obviously from, everyone's going to know it's from God. It's designed for the atheists of the world to wake them up. These moments that are coming up are so key to us. That when all of this is shown to us that we go so all in on Mary, so all in on Jesus. In fact, I think these moments of what Mary's about to do, and I think, I, I just, kumbaya, man, kumbaya. I, I saw her face, and I'm a believer. I think she's about to do something so spectacular that's a part of all of this. We're just going to be dazzled by her, and the world is going to see that she is our mother. And we're going to be all in, and maybe we can save off some of this chastisement. Some of it. Maybe. Mary is his messenger. Mary is heaven's voice. John the Baptist saw it, felt it, knew it from the beginning. Mary is God's spokeswoman, and Jesus just keeps sending her until there will be no need. And that's going to be soon. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Mary, you are here. <laughs> you are so here. My wife saw her standing here before I came up. She is so here. She loves you. She loves me. We are her children. She's so, so, she's so happy right now. She's so happy right now. She's going to do something spectacular. We pray. We pray that you reveal yourself that's so obvious, like, like Our Lady of Guadalupe, so obvious that everybody says I'm in. That obvious. Do it for Russia. Do it for the world. Save the world, Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you, Trapper. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, we, Trapper, has agreed to um, a question and answer session. So I'm going to open it up to questions, if anybody has one. I'll pretend I can see you. Yes, you in the back. <laughs> Take a couple questions here. All right, we have one. What's your name? This is Tim. Hey, Tim. They talk about the first five Saturdays. Is that every year, one time? Is it January through, through May? Or, you know? You know what? I don't think Mary cares. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I hear this. I, I think if you just do five, just do five in a row. It doesn't matter. Old year, new year, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the intention, isn't it? What God registers is the intention. What's my intention? I want to do five in a row? You do five in a row. So good, and good luck with that. It's not always easy, is it? But at least the confession part could be done as early as the previous Saturday and as late as the following Saturday. So you basically have two weeks to work with as far as the confession goes. Uh, but the rest of it, obviously, the Mass has to be done that weekend. That's, you know, Saturday vigil or Sunday and your rosary needs to be done that weekend, that kind of thing, you know, but on that, on that Saturday. <clears throat> Great question. Thanks, Tim. Any, oh, we have another question. Or comments or anything. This is Jerry. Hi, Trapper. Trapper, we had a Bible study session, and uh, a Father Jamie was uh, 
our uh, a moderator, and I asked him a question, and we, he tried to look it up, and we didn't get a solid answer. Here's the question. Did Mary die and then was assumed into heaven, or was she assumed into heaven, body and soul, without dying? <laughs> Let me reference that. I mean, that's actually, that's a great question, and it's been argued, actually. It's been argued because... Um, because there are a couple of cases where in the Old Testament, some, you know, was it, was it Elijah that got taken up, right? Uh, and he wasn't dead, that kind of thing. So uh, most, uh, most theologians that I've heard comment on it, most theologians, by the way, am I looking in the right direction? <laughs> He's to my left. Why am I over there? Your spirit's over there. Would you get over there with your spirit? Um, uh, again, I'm, I'm hearing it from the speakers. But most theologians seem to believe that she did die. And then was assumed body and soul into heaven. Also, where's Joseph? Huh, no grave. So there's also a thought that he too, although not mentioned, may have been assumed heaven and earth, uh, heaven, you know, body and soul into heaven. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? But that's, that's also a theory too because there are no relics of Joseph. And you know how this church is with bones. We got relics everywhere. We got bones of everybody. We got the bones of all the apostles. So, you know, not to have Mary or Joseph uh, makes you kind of wonder about Joseph as well. Great question again. I think we had another. Yeah. I'm... This is Stephanie. Okay. You're talking about confession every two weeks. When I went to ch church and school, Catholic school, it was a weekly confession. What do you get every other week now? When did... yeah, can you repeat? Uh, can you repeat it, Linda? So I uh, used to go to confession every two weeks. Every week, there's when nothing she went wrong to with Catholic that. School, right? And so now you're saying, why has it changed? Why has it changed? For nothing's this? changed. Absolutely, nothing's changed. You can go to confession legally to be a Catholic. You're supposed to go to confession at least once a year, right? Uh, that's I, I, I'm not, Easter. I'm thinking or whatever. <clears throat> but anyway, so once a year you have to go to confession to stay in communion with the church. Obviously, there are many people, and I was one of them, that went decades without going to confession. Uh, if people understood the blessing, the, the blessing spigot that gets turned on with confession, I think we'd run. But we, the devil does such a great job of, us, of selling us that you don't need to go tell that man your sins and nothing happens if you do and you're just going to make those sins happen. You're just going to do it again anyway. It is so powerful. What Mary is saying is go at least once a month. Go every week. Priests, priests go every week or should. Most of them do. Um, but, uh, but once a month is good. I know a lot, it's very easy to have months go by, and then it's like, well, what did I do? And all that. But yeah, I mean, if you're going every week, that's awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you. Any more questions? I'm looking around. Okay, we got one way over here. Walking over to your right, Trapper. Do you feel like Phil Donahue? Remember Phil Some... Donahue used to walk over? <laughs> what was it? Your name? This is Peggy. Okay. The United States has been dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. Uh, could you speak up just a little bit? <laughs> so the United States yes. was dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. Yes. She said, the Blessed Mother said, if we pray, we will not have war on our soil. But we did, with the World Trade Center being bombed. I think it was part of war. Do you think, um, I mean, I guess I don't... She yeah, you can't exactly say that's... The, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I, th I think something like the World Trade Center, I see that as kind of obviously jihad and an, an act of war, but not a, you know, you think of soldiers and armies and all that kind of stuff. It certainly wasn't that. I also, I also wonder, as I'm sure you do as well, you know, whether or not that was God looking the other way to wake us up, you know? Would he have protected us in the 50s, let's say, when, when the faith was much better? I, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, uh, she, uh, we got slapped. Isn't it amazing? That was the last big slap, really. You know? uh, I will say, here's something else, too, though, I'll, I'll make mention of. I, I drew the line between, let's say, World War II, Ark of the Covenant, all of that date stuff, Old Testament, 
Well, in the Old Testament, if you know your Old Testament, you know they then did, they went into another war, didn't they? They went over to, was it called Io, 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 whatever it was, and they got their, they got their butt kicked. Why? God wasn't with them. We have to be with God in order to win the war. If we're not, you, want, you know what you end up with when you don't have the Ark of the Covenant with you? You get Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, these, these other things that happen that have nothing to do with God. And, and you end up with a chastisement, don't you? Because you have people who want to make a buck off a war or whatever the heck it is. Never waste a crisis, right? Never waste a crisis. World Trade Center goes down. Let's attack Iraq. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. Mary was not with us. There was no sign. Was she protecting some soldier? Absolutely. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you can't compare that to what happened with World War II where her fingerprints were all over protection of this country. You know? So we, we can read what God is doing. We can read it. Thank you. Um, I think I'm going to take... We've got one more question over here. All right. Oh, this is Mary. She's to your left, Trapper. <laughs> I would like to have you comment a little bit about the future generation of young people. I was fortunate enough, I was given a Catholic education, and my parents sacrificed a great deal. It means a lot to me. Um, Blessed Mother also called me to Medjugorje, and the graces of Medjugorje have stayed with me in a way that I never imagined. But getting back to my original question, could you comment on the young people? I think they will all become nuns and priests. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> worrisome, isn't it? Yeah, it's worrisome. You pray for them, don't you? You know, I mean, this really is a generation of forgiveness where they know not what they do. Um, it's bad. Stating all, all the obvious things, so, you know, we, we, we pray for them. I think there is special mercy on them. because You know, Jesus said it, though. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? Not a lot. You know, we set a pretty lousy example, I guess. You know, you, you have all this, you know, <laughs> we don't even know what a boy and a girl are anymore. <laughs> it's just... You know, it's crazy, isn't it? It's so crazy. The world is on its head. We all know that, right? Isaiah said it. When good looks like evil and evil looks like good, we're there, you know. We're there, and it's a sign of the, it's, it's a sign of the end times. It's a sign something's coming, you know. Um, so Jesus said not to worry. So I'm doing my best not to worry. One of the ways I don't worry is I don't watch the news. <laughs> you know, the important stuff tends to filter down to me. I know not everybody can do that, but I, I literally... Because it's all so, you know, cattywampus. Even Bill Maher said something so good. Liberal Bill Maher, former Catholic Bill Maher said something so funny. He was looking at this gender stuff going, what are we doing? We're, we're, we're allowing, you know, experimentation on our youth without knowing what to do and giving them, you know, hormone blockers and all this stuff. What are we doing? He says, thank God. Literally, he said, thank God that when I was a kid, I said I wanted to be a pirate. Nobody scheduled me for eye removal <laughs> and peg leg implant. <laughs> so he gets it. So a few of them do get it, you know. So you, you pray that they, they get it and they just see the, 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 the ridiculous nature of it all, you know. So we pray, you know, we pray. We do have CDs here, by the way, too. Oh, I've got that. Uh, 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 hey, yeah, Sabin I got that for you, Trapper. Sabin yeah. So um, we're going to wrap up here, and Trapper, um, it will be selling. You can tell about your CDs, Trapper. Sure. Which he will be sell, They will be selling in the back for you, and then I want to add something to it. Okay. You're done. Uh, one is called Mary His Messenger, which has to do with these kinds of things. Uh, I think the World War II story is on that. Um, there's a lot of just great stories that you know about, some you don't know about, uh, some are personal stories. Just great Mary stuff. Great Mary stuff. Uh, the other one is, did you hear what God just said? And it's just about those things. I, so many people I've learned through the podcast, when they find the podcast, they go, oh, I, never, I thought that was a coincidence. That, that was God talking to me or Mary or Jesus. You know, I, I, I tell the story about when I was born, my mom sent dad to the store to get the birth announcement. 
And he's looking at all the different possibilities. He comes back with the card that has a baby on the cover holding a microphone. <laughs> and the words, a new voice is on the air. Coincidence, you know? He could have picked the card next to it where the baby's holding the toilet plunger, but no. <laughs> you know. So I, you see those things and you just see over and over again in your own life how God is speaking to us and the conversations are just flying by our head. Another example, which it, may, it might be on this one, did you hear what God just said, is there's a buddy of mine, George, who listens and he said he was driving down the road and he was just so ticked at God. He was just so ticked. A buddy of his was going through health issues and marriage issues and he's driving down and he's yelling at God. He's praying very loudly. And he's just saying, life sucks. Life just sucks, God. Thanks a lot. Life just sucks. And he turns the bend, and there's a billboard that says, life is what you make it. <laughs> and he starts laughing, and it's just because it's like he understands how God talks to us now. That is not a coincidence. So that, that CD kind of helps you see God in your daily life and some things that maybe you haven't. So... Did you hear what God just said to Mary, his messenger? Are in the back, and I'll be back there too if you want to chat for a bit. All right, thank you. Thank you, Trapper. All right, thank you. God bless you. All right. Thank you. So, yes. What I'm going to add to this is for those of you that um, maybe want, do not decide to buy a CD from Trapper, we are asking for donations here today, and everything that we raise goes to Trapper. I, I just I, I am so happy yes Trevor because yes because you are you are fabulous you are my friend and whatever your heart inspires you this is for him and his ministry um, we're just taking donations this is all this is all voluntary from all of us here today and I hope you show your expression of love to him by giving something to show your appreciation or buying his CDs which are fabulous as well you win either way um, so um, the other, so please keep us, we have a basket in the back there and we have some gentlemen that are be, uh, collecting. Again, if you have your pieces of paper and you want to give us your email address and your name, more than happy to keep you on our email list and for further announcements about our program. Again, your name will be kept confidential and your email address. Um, and the la uh, two final things, uh, one is our final prayer, but the, before that, um, we, the Finding the Treasure Called Mary program is going on its second mini pilgrimage. The announcement will come out in this week's bulletin here at St. Columbkill and hopefully at some other churches. It's with Father Ramser, Father Robert Ramser here at St. Columbkill, and we are going to two of the most iconic Polish churches that honor Mary in Cleveland, um, St. Stanislaus and St. Casimir. And um, we'll have, he'll give us a lecture, we will have mass, we will uh, 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 recite the uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet, and we'll have a Polish theme lunch. So uh, there are some flyers here today, um, black and white, but look, if you want more information, look in the bulletin. And in closing, uh, remember the handout we gave to you earlier? There's a prayer on the back there below the uh, Immaculate Mary song. It's called St. Patrick's Breastplate. This is my indulgence. This is one of my favorite prayers, and I would ask that you all pray it with me as we conclude today. Are you ready? Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, and Christ in me, Christ beneath me, and Christ above me, Christ on my right, and Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down, and Christ when I arise. Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through a mighty strength. The invocation of the Trinity through the belief in the threeness through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. And in the end, Mary brings us to Jesus. Thank you, everybody. Good night. And uh, come back next month. See you.